If you're like me, you get too many meetings in a given day. And sometimes you go to a meeting and you're like, why am I here? Well, in today's video, we're gonna walk through how to make sure that you're most prepared with your AI sidekick, Copilot Chat and M365 Chat. So let's jump into it now. So first of all, I have Copilot Chat open and you can see I have the two buttons, web mode versus work mode. Now in web mode, this is a classic Copilot Chat, the free version that all of us get with having Windows 11 or Edge browser or just going to Copilot Chat. So if I go over to here and I ask to summarize my meetings tomorrow, you'll notice it kind of looks at me stupid here and says, give me a screenshot of your meetings or whatever. So in this case, it has no context what's going on inside my calendar. This is where Copilot Chat is going to reach its limitations here. To make it go actually inside my calendar, we're gonna need M365 Chat or Copilot Studio Lite as they're calling it sometimes also. So to do that, you'll notice we'll flip over to work here in this case. Now, the few things that I wanna do before I really do this well. First thing I'm gonna do is go over this little three dot you're seeing up top. I'm gonna to go to settings and in settings, I'll go over to personalization and custom instructions. Under custom instructions, we can go through and specify what do we want Copilot to always do in this case, or M365 chat to always do. In this case, I'm telling it never use these M dashes. These are ways that it always shows that this is AI. So when you see an M dash, you know somebody sending an email to you with the help of AI. Copilot and ChatGPT both use these to join two sentences together in many cases. Feel free to ask me questions. And I also, at the very bottom here, I want it to think deeply about its response. This is a key trigger that will tell GPT-5 or Copilot when it's using GPT-5 to go do deeper research on the goal. So I have that saved now, and I'm gonna cancel this and leave this chat. And I'll ask the same question here, uh, show me my meetings for today, summarized. When I ask the same question again, now you're gonna see it actually go out there and research my meetings for today and tell me what I actually have. Some of these are internal ones that I've I created like a men's group one, and then you'll see like a one-on-one -on -one meeting, but I still don't have any the context behind the meeting. And that's where the prompt that I'm gonna share with you now comes into play. So this prompt, if you look in the description of this video, you'll find a LinkedIn article which has the entire prompt that I'm using today inside of it. Now this prompt took a while to write, go back and forth. Please do tweak it for your own liking also. But you can use this prompt to get much more intel about your day's schedule, why you're in this meeting, what were the talking points for this meeting, and what were the last emails and team messages and all of that. This work mode that we're in right now is using M365 chat. And by using M365 chat, you notice you can hit the forward slash and do like, hey, who are the people I wanna bring in this prompt? Are the meetings I wanna bring in the prompt or the emails? So it has access to your full office suite because of that. The web mode or Copilot chat just has access to files that you can upload. But this has access to the full suite of information. As part of that, when I go ahead and paste my prompt in, I'll go ahead and do a new prompt so we can start from scratch here. I'll paste that in. And this is the one that you'll find in the LinkedIn article. I apologize, I'll try to put it in the description of the video, but it's just too long to put it all in there. I'm starting with the same prompt, but then in the braces here, I'm giving it additional instructions. Let me zoom in a little closer so you can kind of see all this a little tighter here. So same thing, first of all, ask for chronological order. It took a long time to go back and forth, back and forth, before I finally got it to do things the way I wanted. Give me a list of the attendees. What is the purpose of the meeting? Look in the body of the invite to determine that. Now, if you can't determine that, look in the past two weeks of emails and summarize those by the organizer. You can also review the past two email, put that on a separate line there, review the past two weeks of emails from other companies in there as well and summarize those emails and transcripts in the meetings and all those kind of things. Then I want to also look, have you think deeply about it, of course. And then for additional context, my salespeople, Jeremy, Terry, and Tricia, uh, look at their emails in the past two days and find any correlations to this. Now, again, I could have gone through into the forward slash Jeremy, forward slash Terry, and it would actually know exactly who those people are. I felt it was pretty good about this without that in this case for this prompt in particular. But to make sure, I would always do a forward slash and then point to people and then, and then go that route instead. All right, in this, we also want, if it's a single one-on-one -on -one meeting, then go ahead and summarize my last uh, communications with that team member over the past seven days. I did that because some of my meetings are one-on-ones with my team 
or I might have a one-on-one with my manager potentially. So by doing that, we can summarize the seven days of those team communications, email communications, and find any action items I owe that person also. Build a rubric on this. This is a way we can grade its response for an executive that might need for this to be successful in those meetings. And then keep on iterating over and over and over again until you get at least an eight out of 10 on that rubric. And then go ahead and hide those iterations from me so I don't see all the back and forth that you did. So when I run this, I should have a, have a good example down here of uh, Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd as well. And the kind of what I want the format to look like with this, you see the meeting summary and all that kind of stuff. So when I run this, we'll see immediately, it is taking a little bit longer to run down here. So it is kind of, thinking more deeply about this. And that's because it's going over and over again, the same thing. If we deconstruct the prompt, we can see it kind of showing all the iterations, throwing them away, trying again, throwing away until it finally reaches the results it's about to show me. So the fact it's taking longer is a good thing. Additionally, we can have this scheduled to run on a periodic basis. And we can also deliver the results of that with something like Copilot Studio, where it drops in your inbox a, a the, the content of the email. All right, we can see right now, it's actually going through all the emails. Again, I would have this typically scheduled. And to show you how to schedule this, let's take while this is running, we'll kind of take a quick side note here. I can hit the three dot here and you'll see scheduled prompts. This will let me go ahead and see everything that's scheduled in my environment already and then also run it now. So I can see my, my prompt I have, this is actually a prompt I use on a regular basis, and I can tell it to run run it now as well. So here we go, here's our meetings, same meetings we saw before, but now we can see some of the, a little more context behind it. We can see past emails that we had with Helen. We can see, uh, in this case, a meeting I had here, and there was a transcript from the last meeting we did with them, and what was the summary of that? There's some extra sales context there, and so on, and so on, and so on. So as we go through this, we're getting much, I mean, pages and pages of the content. So when I go into this, I know what to bring to the meeting and what my talking points are going to be in the meeting also. So we have lots of sales context around this. To schedule this, I can then hit the three dot next to the end of the results here, say schedule this prompt, and it has my entire prompt here. I want it to run daily except for Saturdays and Sundays, and I'm gonna have it delivered to my inbox every morning at, I don't know, 5.30 in the morning or whatever. And then I'll tell it 15 days of scheduling. And then send me an email once this is done. Now this is the way you can have it schedule larger kind of prompts that take you minutes and minutes or half hour to run. You can help tell it to schedule this, this and just send me an email once it's ready. Now, 15 days is the largest number we can put in here right now. However, you can refresh this on a regular basis also. So what does this look like? Well, once it's all done, you'll get an email that looks a little bit like this and with a link to the results. Again, if you want the actual results, go the agent route or go Copilot Studio route for those. I've been selected. It takes me back to Copilot again. Let me kind of increase the size of this, where I can then see the results that were run and the same exact results there. So we can see exact same stuff just through a schedule. So I'm not sitting around waiting interactively for this. So in this video, we showed you a few ways you can do this, kind of iterate into that super prompt that gives you an AI sidekick that will always have you prepared for your meetings. If you enjoyed this, please just subscribe and ring the bell because AI content changes all the time. And we're producing videos way more than weekly on AI topics in this channel. Thanks so much. And leave us a note in the comments about how you would use AI scheduled like this as well to deliver some result to you each morning. If we like your results, we'll actually post a video about that as well. Have a great day, and thanks for joining us.